B-Link is back. B-Link is back with the SER 8845HS based Ryzen 7, 32 gigabytes of memory and a terabyte of storage. It's an aluminum mini PC. It looks vaguely reminiscent of a Mac mini, but it's uh, more hockey puck sized than shoebox sized. Let's unbox. <laughs> It's a very uh, hefty box. Oh, I got it in here. It's uh, there we go. This is really pretty minimal. You get the machine itself that is aluminum, plastic uh, rear. We've got plenty of breathability at the back. Sucks air in from the bottom. You got four removable screws you can get in here. Uh, dual NVMe, uh, so you can run two NVMe storage. You've also got removable DDR5, ships with DDR5, 5600, 32 gigabytes, two 16 gig DIMMs. It's optimal configuration. And the box is a 19 volt, 5.62 amp power supply. Watts is equal to volts times amps. So a little over hundred watts, 120 maybe? And an HDMI cable, a little short HDMI cable. And this is it. This is the entire machine. As far as mini PC accessory bundles go, this is reasonable. Uh, sometimes there's a Visa mounting kit where you can mount this to the back of a monitor or anything like that. B-Link might have an optional accessory for that, but there's nothing like that bundled in the box. You just get the machine. But it is nice that it's, you know, it's real metal. At the rear I.O., we've got our two and a half gig LAN. We've got a mix of USB 5 gigabit, and then this is a USB 2.0 port. Full-size display port, full-size HDMI, a combination headphone, microphone jack, a USB-C port that is USB 4. Uh, don't worry, we're going to test that. And then we've also got our 19 volt power input. There's no other ports on the sides. And then on the front, we've got type C, five gigabit, uh, type A, and then our combination headphone microphone port, another one. And then our reset button and our power button. Now your first boot with this machine is gonna take a few minutes. And that is completely normal because DDR5 memory training takes a little while. Now you might be wondering, I've already got a 7,000 series CPU. Should I just run out and get the 8,000 series CPU? And the answer is no. It's uh, an incremental upgrade at best. Most of the new features from 7,000 series to 8,000 series are around AI and AI acceleration, which we'll talk a little bit more. But the single core and multi-core performance is almost identical to what we saw from the B-Link with the 7000 series CPU. This is just a little bit of an updated model, a little bit different aesthetic, a little bit different port configuration. B-Link is also getting kind of aggressive in terms of pricing and features. Like this does not have a fingerprint sensor or a webcam or anything like that, but it is priced fairly aggressively, at least at the time that I'm doing this video. It's also the processor codename Hawk Point. So if you've been reading things in the rumor mill or looking at mobile or et cetera, et cetera, this has all of the Hawk Point features. So it's, it's a notebook CPU crammed it into a small form factor desktop, basically. It is eight cores, 16 threads, and it is a very, very fast experience. It also has a built-in GPU, the 780M. It's okay for esports titles, I guess you know, 720p, 1280 by 720, like medium low, 1080p on like very low is doable on this. Uh, one thing that B-Link stands out uh, for is if we run the ADA 64 benchmarks, this is one of the only mini PCs I've tested where the DDR5 latency is well below 100 nanoseconds. So 85 nanoseconds was the best tuning that I could do in five minutes of experimentation. Out of the box, it was 89 nanoseconds. And the BIOS does have some pretty cool features we'll take a look at in a second. Your single core score here is just shy of 700. It's about 674 on this run. You get a little bit of variation there. And our multi-core score is 6400, give or take. Not bad. Crystal disk mark, this is probably the most disappointing thing in the whole machine, which really isn't, uh, maybe disappointing is not the right word. We've got our CT SSD. This is, uh, uh, it's a gen four SSD, but we're getting gen three speeds. I mean, it's like three point something gigabytes per second read, right? This really isn't anything to write home about, but this is not an unreliable SSD. It's not crap. It's just not a really fast SSD. Nevertheless, using the machine, it's perfectly responsive and reasonable. I didn't feel like when I was installing software and doing experimentation or anything like that, that the SSD was really bogging down. Nevertheless, these numbers are definitely not the best numbers that we've seen from other mini PCs that we've tested. This isn't bad. It's just, it, it'll do. 
Geekbench 6 has another test that we like to run and look at that. We got, we got a pretty reasonable single core score or multi-core score is also really good here. Geekbench 6 doesn't yet have AI testing and AI acceleration, but the big thing with the AI accelerator in this is that you can do Teams integration. Like they're working on software and they're working on large language models. We've done other videos on really fun things you can do with AI and AI on Windows, but the software is still catching up. So. <laughs> the neural processing unit. That's what everybody's getting excited for and hyped for. Uh, yeah, we've got Windows Copilot, Windows Copilot on ARM, but theoretically, we should be able to connect the dots for Windows Copilot with the AI stuff that is in the processor here. It's just the software isn't quite there yet in terms of like, I guess, Microsoft and AMD meshing. I really hope we see that. Uh, with the coherence that Microsoft has promised on the ARM platform, on the AMD platform with these 8000 series CPUs. That was certainly the promise from AMD at launch, but we'll see if that actually materializes. And except for the best in class latency from A to 64, our other numbers are pretty much what we'd expect from this type of a configuration with two DDR5 DIMMs. Let's hop into the BIOS real quick. It's not Babby's first BIOS, this is great. Ryzen 788-45HS with our Radeon 780M. It does give us full access to the iGPU. I've set a UMA frame buffer size of four gigabytes. Uh, also curiously, resizable bar is disabled out of the box, but it does give you the option to enable it. There are some perhaps lingering issues with adrenaline and the iGPU with resizable bar enabled. That was the case like five versions of adrenaline ago. It's probably safe to enable this, but if you run into problems, uh, you can disable it. If you're gonna use the USB 4 interface, that can also be a source of trouble. So if you're using USB 4 with a Thunderbolt compatible peripheral, we'll talk more about that, then you run into trouble, then remember to come and try it with resize bar on or off because one or the other may, may or may not work. For power loss options, you can set this thing to turn on automatically. If you've got it shoved under a desk or behind a monitor or something, you just turn the power strip off and back on and it'll reboot everything. This is nice for hospitality machines and you know commercial class machines. System management unit, there was uh, some manual configuration here, thermal control, TJ Maxx 90. This may stem from the fact that this is kind of sort of a part that was originally designed for mobile. You don't want a laptop to feel like it's overheating or doing something bad and so uh, there's some controls in here, but everything else being on auto. Eco mode is on auto. Stop em control is on auto. You, you might want to, you know, manual and disable that. Uh, stop em is the thing where it's, you, you don't want the laptop to feel hot in your lap. And so it's a kind of throttling, but this is not that. And also nice metal case, good for heat dissipation. It also has PXE support for network booting. So if, if you rely on network boot to configure your machines, you can turn that on in BIOS, it is off by default. You may also have to enable the PXE ROM under demo board as an option. Strange label, but okay. You also have a little bit of a control. You can set the machine to wake up at a specific time every day. You can have the USB be on or off when the machine is in S5 suspend. The power limit, the default power limit setting is balance mode. You can control that from Windows. It does seem to work in Windows. And NVMe rate is an option. If for some strange reason you wanted to try to build an AMD NVMe RAID 0 or RAID 1 with this platform, it looks like it would support it, but I wouldn't recommend it. We do also have VLAN options in the BIOS for our onboard Realtek 2.5 gig NIC. And that's pretty much it for BIOS options, but it's nice to see those options because so many PCs have really locked their BIOS down. We still have control of our system management unit, we still have control of our TDP, and we can override our junction temperature. So those are all nice things to see. USB 4 support, PCIe tunneling over USB-C, if you will. The ability to use an external graphics card at PCIe 3 by Gen 4 speeds. In other words, pretty anemic speeds, but still. I got the old Radeon 7 in there. It's booting. <laughs> we are running this external PCI Express GPU and our Cooler Master Thunderbolt dock off of our 8000 series AMD CPU. This is great because like the 7 and 8000 series, AMD is finally getting PCIe tunneling consistently correct. Or at least their OEMs are able to do it. Their, their OEMs are able to figure it out because, you know, I mean like on the AMD Advantage stuff, okay, sometimes, but then also sometimes not because I got the AMD Advantage System 76 laptop, which was 
uh, from Mdor. But mm, PCIe tunneling, no, I had to DIY that, and my, it, it died in the process. But this is plug and play, and it worked, and that's great, and it's fantastic, and it's 2024, and that's pretty exciting. Now all we have to do is get AMD to beat Intel to the punch on, you know, Thunderbolt 5 or some Thunderbolt 5 equivalent technology that is insanely way faster than Thunderbolt 3. Because Thunderbolt 3 is only 40 gigabits, and 40 gigabits is not enough bandwidth to saturate any GPU beyond about a 6600, an RX 6600, which actually would be a pretty good choice for this platform versus my, my Radeon 7. But hey, what are you going to do? Let's talk power consumption. At the wall, idling on the Windows desktop, about 15 watts, give or take. Pretty respectable. When we're running our full tilt benchmarks, it's around 75 watts, maybe tickling 80 watts a little bit, but mostly 75 watts. Which again, pretty respectable, keeping those eight cores and 16 threads fully fed. Fan noise. Fan noise on this unit is probably the best mini PC that we've gotten to date so far. It is a very, very low hum. There's no high-pitched rattle, there's no high-pitched whine. It's really just the sound of air moving. And you really can only hear the sound of air moving when it's been running a 75 watt benchmark for the better part of 10 or 15 minutes. So this is good thermal engineering on B-Link's part. Every now and then you probably want to pick up the unit and uh, make sure that you've uh, not got any dust bunnies living underneath the thing because it does move a fair bit of air through there. I can definitely feel the air on my wrist when I pick it up to turn it over. And it is a, uh, a warm, uh, warm breeze there. So overall, this isn't a bad assembly. It's, it's, it works really well. Uh, let's take a quick look at Linux. Well, I'm happy to report Linux support is above average on this. Excellent, I would say. The Wi-Fi chipset was correctly detected with the firmware, at least on our Nobara installer, our Nobara fresh out of the box setup. Our graphics driver stuff all worked as one would expect because it's 8000 series AMD. It's 8000 series G, so 780M. 780M's been there, done that. So Linux, good, yay, makes sense. Bluetooth, thumbs up. Realtek 2.5 gig NIC, yep, wired, works as well. Our USB ports, including our USB 4 port, at least our USB 4 port in USB mode. The PCIe tunneling is a uh, another conversation on Linux. We'll table that for another day, but excellent support for Linux. So if you're thinking about getting one of these to run Linux, everything's working well on Linux. Even fan speed is working correctly, depending on the load of the system. And the fact that the BIOS has the power profile picker, if you want to override the power profile picker in, in Linux, it's a nice little Linux machine. So it's really nice to see that. Good job, B-Link. I think Linux might be getting more popular around the world. I'm just noticing some things. Some things are happening with Linux and the Linux ecosystem. It's exciting. Well, that's been a quick look at the Ryzen 8000 series B-Link. There's a lot to like with those mobile CPUs. 15 watts power usage with idle at desktop. I mean, that's, it's hard to beat that. It is very hard to beat that. I mean, that is sort of laptop class performance, but in a desktop, but then you also get desktop class performance. I mean, this beats the pants off of desktop performance from like three or four years ago, at least business class commodity desktops. So nice. That's interesting. Uh, small form factor PCs are always interesting. The fact that you can upgrade the storage and RAM in this one again is a welcome, you know, 96 gigabytes of DDR5 in this platform. Yeah, you can do that. You can, you can DIY that. That'll work fine. So so you get some interesting options. I'm Modelist Level 1. It's been a quick look at this. If you get any questions or you want to see me take anything for a spin or you want to share your own experiences or horror stories, come to the Level 1 forums and uh, look around and maybe do some comparison shopping there. Live vicariously through other people's experiences with mini PCs because a lot of people buy these to use them for home servers, as gifts, guest room machines in their house. You can take over a lot of duties. From a security aspect, buying these inexpensive machines and using this for your taxes and finances and online banking and only that and your gaming and stuff on another machine, that is a good strategy in terms of security, but you really shouldn't get too cheap of a machine because there's been, uh, you know, some brands of mini PC come with Trojans and bad software build out. And as far as I know, B-Link has never been guilty of that. But if I'm wrong, let me know in the forum on level one or, you know, we can take a look at that or see what's up. Or hey, if you just install a fresh copy of Linux or Linux distro, probably not gonna have much of an issue there, huh? 
I'm Willis Level 1, I'm signing out, and find me in the Level 1 forums.